Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Are you ready to do another layout in our Julie Nutting Paper Doll Altered Book? Well, this one's going to be really, really fun. So what we have so far is the um, Oriental one with a koi pond, with a drop-down koi pond. We have this one with a changeable scenery and the cute little notebook behind it. And so now we're going to come to this layout. So what we have to do first, I'm going to use this side over here that is the back side from this page. And then I'm going to make three sets of two pages. So I'm going to take two pages and put them together with Mod Podge. Two more pages and two more pages. So I'll end up with three sets. So I'm going to glue those together and let those dry. And then we'll get started on my idea for this layout. For this one I'm using, I'm going to uh, use probably four or five girls. So I just grabbed some and you don't have to use the same ones as I am, but if you'd want to know the names of the ones I'm using, it's Mindy. This one is Mindy. Megan. Phoebe. And there's a couple of different Phoebes, so it's this one with the little bows on her shoes. Uh, Marisol and Taylor. So those are the ones I'm going to use, but for this project, it's going to be something a little bit different. I'm only going to use the image just about um, three quarters of an inch above the knees on each one. So I'm not going to um, worry about decorating or stamping or coloring the bottom half of the image. I'm not going to do the legs on um, this one. I'll end it here just below her dress. This one um, probably right at her dress. I could maybe even go just a slight bit higher. This one the dress skirt is too long so I'll probably cut it off here and this one here and I may change out this dress to make it thinner and not so wide. So I'm looking for more, some of the images that are more narrow, that's what will fit better. If you want something that's wider, one of your girls, and she's a little bit wider, then you're just going to have less girls on this layout. So it's up to you. You could have two girls, three girls, and if I possibly can, I might have five because they're kind of narrow. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and a couple of them I'm going to do some interesting things. I'll show you on camera on these two, the extra things that I have in mind for them. So for now, I'm going to put them aside. I'm going to take these three, Taylor, Megan, and Phoebe, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp them and layer them like I usually do. I'm not going to do that on camera because you guys have already done that. And in the first book series. I've shown it a bunch of times how to stamp it onto pattern paper and layer them and how what I use for my cardstock and layering and coloring and making the hair layered and things like that. I've already shown it. So to save time, I'm not going to show it this time. So I'm going to do these three just below, just above the knee here. And then I'll come back and show you what they look like and tell you uh, what we're going to do with them, why we don't need their legs. It's going to be really fun though. So stay if you're new to this channel and you've just found this video series, um, you may not have seen how I do my girls, but I do use the Dilutions, the Ranger Dilutions journaling block. It's this plastic block here that has this cool uh, edge for journaling, and I use that as my platform for these stamps. The cling stamps fit perfectly on this, and that's what I use for doing my stamping. So I just thought I would mention that. These are going to need to be kind of stiff. So if you um, stamp your girls and layer them just on cardstock, you're going to probably want to back them with a little piece of cardboard, a thin, lightweight cardboard, because you are going to want to be them nice and sturdy and stiff. So I'm stamping her initially onto a file folder, and I don't think that's sturdy enough, so it's going to need to be backed with something else, either a second layer of file folder or a piece of lightweight cardboard. So what you're going to need for this project are wooden popsicle sticks. And I'm using a, ones that aren't too wide, but I don't think it really matters. I just had some that were a little bit more narrow. And I've got even got this narrow one that I'm going to do something fun with. So that's why I need to um, back this. And I thought before I back it, what I think I'll do is I'm going to use another piece of file folder to make her more stiff. I'm going to just put it down and trace all around her and cut it out. And then when I glue the two pieces together, I'm going to glue this popsicle stick to the back 
like this up as far as I can put it and then glue it to the other piece so it'll be backed in file folder and I can um, glue those two pieces together and clamp them and let it dry. So you're wanting to put your girls together, back them with lightweight card and put a popsicle stick in between the two pieces. So that's what we're making. So here's what it looks like when I traced around her. Now I'm going to cut this out, glue the popsicle stick on and glue these two pieces together. So I've glued my popsicle stick down. Now I'm going to glue that second piece onto the back. And then I'm going to just use some clamps to clamp them together. And then I still may need to go around and trim a little bit here and there. But the purpose of it is, is just to be nice and sturdy and have a stick at the bottom. So here's what she looks like. I put little flat back rhinestones um, for buttons on her little blouse. I painted the black background in blue. I mean the background in blue like sky and she's glued to her stick. So this is what I'm going to do with all of the girls. Okay, so I'm working on Min Mindy and she's got that skirt that's really wide. And these, these girls are much better being thin. In fact, with these, I cut parts of the skirts off to make them skinnier like this. So they're, they're thinner. It's mainly so that you can get more on a page. Um, but her skirt is really big and belled out. So what I did was I stamped my base and now I've stamped on the pattern paper that I'm going to use to make her outfit. I'm going to trim those pieces out, but I'm going to, instead of having them be out like this, when I glue them onto this, I'm going to glue them down more and overlap each other so it makes her dress more narrow and I'll show you what I mean as I get to that point but you would kind of just have to play around with them if you're um, trying to make a wider stamp a little bit thinner. So I put down her top first and now I've got those two pieces to put in place for the little peplums on her dress and instead of them going out like in the picture what I'm going to do is just put them inwards like this and then when I trim out the doll obviously I'll trim out close to where trim out next to where I've put it not what's stamped on the card and that'll make her not so wide so here's what it looks see how different it is and how much um, more narrow it is I just um, stamped around the edge of that one to make the little skirt that goes up underneath. And so now when I trim it out, of course I'll trim around this edge and she'll have a different dress and it'll be more narrow. So that's how you would make a doll different and make her more narrow at the bottom. So this one is Marisol and her dress is strapless, but I wanna add some straps to it. You could do that with uh, paint pens, you could do it with markers, you could um, just pencil them in and uh, use color somehow, but I want to use a ribbon. So what I'm going to do before I put the backing on and the stick, I'm going to just um, put ribbon onto a needle and it's a needle that has kind of a big eye to it so I can feed my little piece of ribbon through. And I'm going to poke a hole where I want it to go at the top of her dress like that and then up at her shoulders where it's going to go and so I'm going to start from the back in one of those holes and feed my ribbon through and then I'm just going to anchor it with a little bit piece of scotch tape. It'll get glued when I glue my cards together but that'll just anchor it down and then I can put her little ribbon straps like this. And I'm going to keep them kind of loose so they puff up a little bit. And then this way, when I put the back on, all those little uh, parts in the back, all the sewing parts in the back will be hidden and sandwiched within that card that's going to get glued. So that's why I'm doing it first. And now she's got cute little ribbon straps on her dress. Look how cute. I love that. That looks so cute that I think what I'm going to do is put a little ribbon across her waist. So I'm going to do the same thing there. Poke a hole 
on either side of her waist, come in from the back and go across and then she'll have a little ribbon across her waist too. Yeah, look at it. That looks so cute. And I might even make, I think I'll use that same ribbon to make a little bow to put in her hair to match. So here are my girls on their sticks. And I added a little bit of fun to each one. So this one has the ribbon with a little ribbon bow in her hair. This one I added a bird's nest to her hair. I just uh, used an X-Acto and cut one of the curls and stuck a little bird nest behind it. So she's got a bird nest. And this one I added some um, nail art gems for doing like acrylic nails so that she's got earrings and a necklace and a little fancy thing in her hair. I just like to add a little bit of detail and fun to each one. This one's got some flat back gems as buttons. And then this one has uh, raised bows so her bow is popped up. And I added some uh, nail gems to her headpiece and her necklace and gave her a cute little belt. So she's got bling too. So there's my girls on the sticks. And now let's move on to the page. This is such a fun project. I hope you're enjoying it. So here's a, a smaller, thinner, this is more like a coffee stir stick than just a regular popsicle stick. And what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna paint it a color with acrylic paint and I'm going to make a birdhouse. Um, so there's gonna be a birdhouse on this stick. I'm gonna take another popsicle stick and I'm gonna make a sign, probably an oval. I think an oval will look pretty. I think I'll just print it on my computer or type it on my uh, manual typing uh, typewriter and make an oval saying for my garden for um, sticking in, in behind the girls. And it might say something like, um, take time to stop and smell the flowers in your garden or take time to enjoy your garden or something like that. So I'm gonna make those two elements on sticks as well. I'm using an alcohol marker and they were great for tinting the wood on your popsicle sticks. And it makes it look like wood stain. So just using an alcohol marker and staining your wood looks really cool. I just thought I'd show that. So for my saying, what I did was just um, print this, type this out in Microsoft Word. I printed it onto cardstock. And I'm using this mat. I'm not sure if you've seen these. It is older than old. Sometimes you can still find them. In fact, I looked on Amazon and mm, sometimes you can find them, sometimes you can't. But it's called a Colossal. It has a, um, a X-Acto blade that swivels and it's a template that you can put over your Put over your saying, and then you just um, stick the swivel knife into the slot, and you just go around and you can cut it out, and then you can cut a mat to mat it in another color by going out the next round, and so it cuts out your oval. You can do ovals and squares and circles and things. I've been using this for years but um, if you have another way of cutting an oval or find something that's a circle to draw around you can do it that way as well but if you could find a colossal cutting mat with this this foam mat and the swivel cutting blade they are super fun to use they come in all different sizes and styles so it's just a fun little scrapbooking tool that I'm using Okay, I've got to tell you about this really nifty thing. There is an app that my mom found, and it's called Print to Size. It only costs $2.99, and you can take any photo and adjust the size of it, lay it out on a sheet of paper on the app on the uh, screen, and then print it. So I wanted a birdhouse picture. Here's a cute birdhouse. And so I just went online and looked for birdhouse images. I found one. I right-clicked it and saved it to... Uh, photos and then you go into print to size select that photo and then you can make it you can shrink it to any size you want so I've got my stick and I wanted this to be about two inches I measured to see about how big do I want it and 
I could make it two inches and print it. And then I cut it out and I'm gonna just trace it onto a um, file folder and back it to glue my stick in just like we did our dolls. And now I've got a birdhouse on a stick. So I just thought I would tell you guys about that app. Again, it's called Print to Size. It's pretty cool. So here's how my birdhouse turned out. Oh, it's so cute, I love it, on a stick. And my sign, take time to enjoy your garden. So these are ready to add to our girls, and now we can do the page and get started on the layout. Okay, so for your book, you have this hard side on the left from the previous layout. You have the two sets in the middle and the one set on the right, because you made three sets of two. So the sets of two are going to be actually glued down here and glued down here. But what it's going to do is it's going to make a nice hollow place in here for sticking your sticks. So what you want to do is take your girls, and they're going to be interchangeable in their spots. So that's what's kind of fun about doing an altered book. I like to do things that are interactive, that you can change things up, move them around. And these girls are going to be able to move and be put wherever you want to put them and you can change them up. But what you initially are going to want to do is lay them on the page to find where you're going to want things to go. I know the birdhouse, I want that to be close to this girl because she's got the um, bird's nest in her hair. So I might just do her over here maybe and the birdhouse here. Maybe I'll do that. I like that. That's cute. And then I'll do a spot where a girl can go, and it could be any girl. And then over here, I can put three girls, and you want to kind of stagger them higher and lower. And then I need to find a place for where to put my garden sign. So what you're going to do when you get it laid out is on your page, this is, this is your page that's going to get glued down. You're going to just take your pencil, and you're going to mark... On either side of the stick, you're going to make a circle mark, just a dot. Like I know for sure I want that one there and this one here. And then I like the height of them, so you want to draw a line across. So let me zoom in so I can show that a little closer. So over here, maybe I'd like my garden sign to be about right there. That's a good spot for that. Nice and high right here. So if I'm going to put my garden sign there, I'm going to put a dot here, a dot here, and a line at the bottom like that. So that's going to show me where I need to cut my slit is going to be dot to dot where you cut your slit. You're not going to cut this one. This is going to be where you're going to put the glue on the page so that when you put the stick in, it'll stop at that mark. And then I can put my girls anywhere I want and again do the same thing. Put the dots where they need to go and I don't know that you really need to have a stopping point at the bottom of their sticks, but you could if you want them to be a certain height. If you want one girl over here to be a little taller, you might want to put your dots and then put your line and have that be that one. So that way, whatever doll you put in there is going to sit a little high. So stagger them and do that. Then what you're going to do is take your page and you're going to put your self-healing mat behind the page and where your dots are. You're going to connect the dots. You can go slightly past them because you need to give it a little space. So here's my two dots, dot, dot, and I'm going to cut a line right there with an X-Acto knife. Same here. You're going to move your mat behind this page, and you're going to cut those cut those lines with an X-Acto right there, right there, and wherever I determine I want the other one. So that's the first step is cut your slits in the two center set pages. So I'm going to slip my mat behind this page just like that and I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and cut across that slit. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. It's not even going to show but it's going to be a place where you're going to be able to stick that stick in that little slot. So see, I'm sure you're getting the gist of where we're going with this. 
So make your slot slits for all your girls and your birdhouse and your sign. And that's that's the next step is just cut all your single slits across. Okay, so I've got all my slits cut. Now before I glue these pages into place, make sure that your girls or um, signs or birdhouse, make sure they fit in the slots because it's going to be really hard to cut them after the fact. So make sure they fit. Just make sure they slip down into the little slit that you made. If you made a dot on either side, they should be perfectly fine. So mine mine all fit. I don't think you need to worry about it, but it's better to be check it than to have it be difficult. So now what you're going to want to do is glue these two pages into place onto their bases. So this has got the base on the left from the previous. This has got the base page on the right where we glued some sets together. They're going to get glued down, but you want to leave this whole bottom space empty, obviously, so that you can put your girls into the little slots. So you're going to uh, glue up above and you'll be able to see it when you flip the page over this way. You can see where you where you can put glue, and you can kind of just make a little line even with your glue bottle. Let's do that just to show you what I'm talking about. Because you can do it with Mod Podge or whatever you want to glue it with. Glue would probably be the easiest, but see how I'm kind of going, and I'm gluing and I'm leaving. I'm going to leave those spots and this whole top can get glued and it can get glued all around the bottom base. And then you can just push it flat to the other page and glue it into place like this. It's going to leave that bottom space open and empty to hold the sticks. So that's why you don't glue it only around the edge at the bottom, but all over at the top to make a solid page. And then it'll have the pocket airspace inside. If you have something specific like the birdhouse where you know you want it to be a certain height, I drew that line. So you're going to kind of have to just put your finger to finger like this and put a little glue right there. So what that's going to do is that's going to give a stopping point for that stick. The girls, I don't think it really matters all that much unless you have a specific height you want them to be. But if you do, if you want them to sit at a certain level and you made that line, just put your fingers to fingers like this, flip it over and put a little bit of glue on the side, on the side that's getting glued down. And then that will give a stopping point for that stick to land on the inside. I'm almost out of glue here. Okay, and then glue your upper part of your page and around your edge, just the bottom edge inside, and glue it into place. Okay, so what you're left with are two pages. So now you've got one solid set over here, one solid set over here, and you're ready to decorate. And what you want to do first is to try out your slots, make sure they work for putting your girls in the slots. And you might have to um, lift that up a little bit just until you can um, get that stick in there. The other thing I wanted to tell you about an idea for the sticks is I like to take, I have this little sander piece, it's a distress tool, and I like to go at the bottom of my popsicle sticks and just sand them to more of a point. I mean, it doesn't have to be pointy pointy, but if you sand this down, you end up with it more narrow. See how it's more narrow and pointier. It makes it much easier to slide your stick into the slot. See how that, instead of the stick being squared off like it is from being cut, if you sand it, just use some sandpaper or a nail file or whatever you've got, but just kind of sand those edges on both sides. Round them out a little bit. And instead of it being flat, it's more to a tapered edge like that. And then it makes it really easy to slip it into its slot. And the first time is always a little tricky, but once you've done it a few times, it's going to remember the shape. But look, it makes it nice and easy to slip them into the slot. 
So here's what mine is going to look like. Here's my girls all in their little slots, the sing, the birdhouse. And now what's left to do is to decorate your background. So you're going to have to obviously take all your girls back out. And again, like I said, you can move these around. This is going to be a really fun interactive page that you can swap them up and put her there and put her over here. Look at that. How fun that it gives you the option of switching and moving the girls around. I love that. Okay, so we're going to take those out. And the next step is going to be to do your background. So what I'm going to do for mine, you can decorate your backgrounds any way you like, but what you want to be careful whenever you're gluing things down, doing collage, you want to be careful not to glue over those slits. And I'm going to show you an idea because I'm going to make mine a garden. They're going to be standing behind all kinds of collaged flowers. And I'm going to do something that's going to hide that slit, but not interfere with the slit or glue it down or I won't have to if you glue down like a magazine flower you'd have to cut the slit through it which you could do and then you could put the girl in it and she'd be the flowers would be behind her and in front of her but I have another idea for that too that I'll show but for the background here I am just going to do blue sky I'm going to do it ombre dark at the top going down to lighter I've already shown that a couple times so I won't show it I'll use my cute little tool here if you're new to this channel and this is the first video you've seen of this project, start from the beginning because you're going to learn so many tips and tricks as I've gone along. But I'm going to use this tool here and I'm going to put my dark paint, and dark couple drops of dark paint to light and I'm going to blend them all out to make a beautiful dark to light sky in the background and then this is all going to be collaged flowers so they're going to be flowers from books magazines they can be from greeting cards anywhere you can find flowers you want to layer it and do some popped up so it's going to be a nice dimensional flower garden that they're going to be standing in so i'll get started on mine and i'll pop in and show you as i go along step by step and then i'll show you my idea for putting some collaged flowers over these slits without um, to hide the slits but not uh, impede the little slot. So well, let's get started and have some fun doing our backgrounds. Okay, so I'm starting to find flowers from all different places. Here are some that came from Daphne's Diary. I love those roses. This was out of a magazine, so look at all those great flowers that I can cut out and layer and collage. Here's from a magazine. Things like that would be great. Um, just something to keep in mind if you've got things like this where it is a, a arrangement of flowers. You don't want it to overwhelm your girls. They're, they obviously are going to be in a big flower garden. That's even cool to put down and then layer some flowers on top. So you could fussy cut or tear around something like that. These are great individual flowers that you could cut just one or two of them like I did with these and stagger them. You want to kind of make it be a little bit balanced. The other thing you can do, here's something else you can do as you layer. Now that's going to be, those are going to be collaged on and you can also paint. So why not use some acrylic paints or paint pens? You can also come in here into your book and take your paint pens and do some stalks of flowers and put them in the background because they're some of it will get covered up so draw some stems like that put some leaves on them with your paint pens or use a paint brush and and um, acrylic paint to paint maybe but just get creative. So you're going to have some in the background like that. And then you're going to put things over the top too. And it's just going to make it more garden-like with all kinds of levels and layers of flowers. So paint pens, though, are really fun for doing things like um, you can come in here and put dots and make it look like this kind of a flower. Like that, little things like that. And those cute little detail things will be in your background with your collage on top of it. So that'll be kind of pretty to do something like that. So that's an idea. Um, when you're gonna cover up these, these spots here where you've cut your slits, you wanna be really careful 
My trick for that is the same as the girls on the stick. What you wanna do is when you find a flower that's gonna go in that area. So like say I was gonna use these roses and they're gonna go right here. I would just put this on a piece of file folder because it's just thin paper. So put it on file folder, glue it all down, fussy cut it out. And when you glue it into place onto the book for collage, you just want to put your glue on the bottom half of the slit, not this top half. Be careful that it doesn't ooze over and glue that shut. Put a little glue down here. Glue your, your flower that's on file folder in place of it, or even put a pop dot behind it and pop it up. And you're still going to have your slit behind, and you'll be able to slip your girl in behind these flowers, and it won't impede that slit and you won't see the slit. So that's my idea for that. So you can take flowers and put them down on cardstock or file folder and trim them out, pop them up in front of those slits and put things down first that are flat around it and then pop this up on top of it. And that'll hide the slit, but make your garden dimensional. These Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens are also great for doing some of your drawing in some leaves and some grasses and things or making flowers. They work really well and they um, work well over acrylic paint. This is where you really can let your creativity shine, go crazy and make a beautiful flower garden. Here's how my little garden of flowers collaged is coming along and I am just layering, 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 one on top of the other. And this one I popped up with some pop dots, so it's dimensional. And I'm trying to avoid my slits. It's a little tricky to do that, but I'm avoiding them. Okay, this one was glued to file folder, and here's my slit right here. So what I wanna do to put that one in place is I'm gonna put glue just on the bottom half. You can draw a pencil line if you like, if that makes it easier for you to have a pencil line across it and only put glue at the bottom. So I'm just going to glue, put glue around the bottom edge and I'm going to glue it in front leaving that that slit to be behind the loose part of the flower. Just like that. It makes it dimensional and then it's going to hide that slit, but she's going to be able to slip um, right behind it. So it's perfect. So I'm going to do that in a couple other places where the slits are for the girls to go and keep working on my collage. So here's my final page with my beautiful flower garden and all the cute girls on sticks. I love it. It looks so cute, like the birdhouse. I added a little bird. I drew in some little dragonflies here and there, flying around the garden. And these are all those flowers that I put on to file folders and only glued at the bottom so the girls can stick behind them. And you don't see the slits that they go into. So it works out really nice. And again, you can change them around. I put a... Um, flower skirt at the bottom of this one. I needed a little bit more length to it and that turned out really cute. She looks really cute flower, but you can change them around so you can move them and swap them and slip one in here and move this one over here. They all can be swapped around and moved around. So fun, fun, fun project. I hope you enjoyed this. It turned out even better than I had imagined it would. I've got take time to enjoy your garden the cute birdhouse and the little birds in the nest and then the cute collaged garden and it's just lots of collaged flowers from all different places magazines and books and things so thanks for stopping by i hope you enjoyed this one and it gives you some ideas of something to do in your julie nutting paper doll altered book go make some art today because art soothes the heart <music>